Notice these casual pictures of some celebrities. Do you notice a pattern in these pictures? Well, from the title of the video, you have probably guessed it. Yes, they are not wearing smartwatches. Instead, they generally flaunt their traditional analog luxury watches. Obviously, they are not going to wear the mass-produced standardized $400 smartwatches. The appeal of traditional luxury watches among celebrities is deeply rooted in their aesthetic and symbolic value. Brands such as Rolex, Patek Philippe, and Audemars Pugway are synonymous with luxury, sophistication, and timeless elegance, qualities that celebrities are keen to associate with their public personas. The exclusivity, craftsmanship, expensive materials, and precision engineering pushes their price from hundreds of thousand dollars to million dollars. If smartwatches are not the result of trickle-down effect, and have primarily remained within the confines of the middle-class subculture, then what explains their popularity? Surely, their utility must triumph their ability to just act as a status symbol. Well, smartwatches offer a myriad of functional advantages, including fitness tracking, notifications, communication, and health monitoring. Want to track your calories burnt during workout, steps taken, heart rate, call and messaging, payment or monitor your sleep. They can do it all. Now, let us explore how well smartwatches perform the functions built into them. If you feel that you aren't utilizing all the features of your expensive smartwatch enough, relax, you are not alone. Fitness tracking is the primary goal of smartwatches. It works well for athletes and fitness enthusiasts providing them with details of all the health parameters. But an average person spending not more than an hour on extensive fitness regime, it fails to justify the price tag for limited features utilized, primarily time and calories burnt. If you are an average person and you are still utilizing most of the features of your smartwatch, even after four months of purchase, count yourself as an exception people don't seem to be too worried about the calories burnt every day, steps taken, or heart rate. Using maps on the small screen is cumbersome, and so is reading emails or browsing internet, and all of these drain the battery quickly. Extensive usage would mean another device to charge daily. Seriously, Apple needs to decide. If for all the tasks, you have to pull your phone out to do them effectively, what purpose do they serve exactly? Just another nuisance? Take a look at this article from the New York Times. While these smartwatches are being branded as medical devices, how do they actually fare? The same article highlights study conducted by the American Journal of Medicine that found little indication that wearable devices provide a benefit for health outcomes. Consider this article from Digital Trends. Smartwatches are not very accurate in counting steps in certain cases, depending on the style. The heart rate measure is off the mark when you are sweaty or exercising intensely. The measure of calories burnt is at best an estimate. To understand how do these products sell, we need to understand the marketing tactics used by big corporations to influence consumer psychology. Let's be clear, it's not just smartwatches that could be classified as excessive tech. Take smart water bottles, for example. With temperature indicator, hydration tracking, reminders to drink water, Bluetooth speaker, and integration with fitness apps. Or smart refrigerators that can track food inventory, suggest recipes, remind grocery items. All these modern tech products are making humans even more dependent on machines. The intention is to quantify every aspect of our life and increase dependency and engagement through gamification. The more dependency you have on these devices for different activities throughout the day, more you lose control of yourself. It is not just a friendly reminder from the device to go for workout, drink water, or reminder to buy grocery. Your mind gets attuned to the multiple notifications and acts only when it gets one. You are not thinking. You are being counseled. Companies employ various marketing tactics to sell their products. One such tactics is 
the use of targeted advertising to direct personalized ads to potential customers that creates an illusion of perceived need. By getting products endorsed through influencers as trusted figures who approve of the products. Or resorting to emotional appeals to create connection between consumer and the products. Fear of missing out or FOMO is one such concept. The marketing tactics affect consumer psychology and their buying decisions. The three most important ways this works is novelty seeking, social proofing, halo effect. What is novelty seeking? We humans have a tendency to get attracted to new and innovative products, regardless of their actual utility. Companies keep tweaking their products to keep the consumer enthusiasm alive. Social proofing happens when we want to conform with the actions of everyone else in the society when we are unable to decide for ourselves. When consumers see others adopting a particular technology, they are more likely to follow suit. Halo effect happens when the perception of someone or something is positively influenced by its association with another popular individual or successful thing. Thinking like, if iPhones are the best, then surely Apple Watches must be good too. By positioning these products as essential for an aspirational lifestyle, companies tap into consumers' desires to enhance their social status and self-image. There are two concepts that we need to understand to make informed decisions. First, we must understand the human tendency to return to the stable level of happiness despite experiencing major positive or negative life experience. That car that you bought gave you initial excitement, but soon became a familiar part of your routine life. This phenomenon is called hedonic adaptation. Next time, before giving in to your impulses and buying something, maybe postpone it for a few days. Seven day rule is a good starting point. Second, we should understand the expectation effect. You see, our mind and body are greatly interlinked and have a huge impact on each other. In his new book, The Expectation Effect, David Robson talks how expectation about your body brings significant physiological benefits. He notes, it is easy to imagine how, if you believe you are at higher risk of heart disease, each day may be filled with doom-laden thoughts and every feeling of ill health could be interpreted as a sign of your deterioration, thoughts that eventually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-quantification and measuring all the health parameters of body throughout the day could negatively impact your mental health that influences your physical health, which in turn influences your mental health, and it becomes a never-ending cycle. It is fitting for us to occasionally detach from technology and listen to our body. Sometimes you can't help but wonder, how did our forefathers survive to 80 and beyond before the digital age?